Sometimes things don't go our way, sometimes things are difficult. That doesn't mean it's over. We need to ensure that we remain in the presence of God. When things are hard, when we go through storms of life and tribulations, and no one is available to help us, we need to remain focused on God and let God restore us and everything. This is GRM, Gospel Revelation Ministry. Welcome to Gospel Revelation Ministry this Monday, the 4th of July, 2022. We focus on spreading the Word of God, addressing worldly topics biblically. You can learn more about this ministry at grministry.org. I am your host, Yinka Martins, and this ministry's pastor is Pastor Joshua at Jewale. Good day, brethren. Today we're going to talk about the time of restoration is at hand. Our Bible reading today is going to be the book of Job, chapter 42, verse 1 to 12. Job, chapter 42, verse 1 to 12. It reads, Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that you can do everything, and that no purpose of yours can be without from you. You are asked, Who is this who has cancer without knowledge? Therefore, I have altered what I did not understand, things too powerful for me, which I did not know. Listen, please, and let me speak. You said, I will question you and you shall answer me. I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Therefore, I harbor myself and repent in dust and ashes. And so it was, after the Lord had spoken this word to Job, that the Lord said to Eliphaz the Tamanite, My wrath is aroused against you and your two friends, for you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has. Now therefore, take for yourself seven bulls and seven rams. Go to my servant Job and offer for yourself a burnt offering. And my servant Job should pray for you, for I will accept him, least the deal which you are cutting to your follies because you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has. So Eliphite the Tamanite, and Bildad the Shuhite, and Sophar the Namathite, went and did as the Lord commanded them, for the Lord had accepted Job. And the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then all his brothers, all his sisters, and all those who had been his acquaintance before, came to him and ate food with him in his house. And they consoled him and comforted him for all the adversity that the Lord had brought upon him. Each one gave him a piece of silver and each one a ring of gold. The last verse. Now the Lord has blessed the later days of Job more than his beginning. For he had had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. The story of Job is common among the Christians. Job was a very wealthy man. He had so many children, so many possessions, cattles and houses and all, but he lost them. He lost everything within a day or two. And why? Because the devil accused him. He said, whatever we are going through in life right now, Whatever difficulty you are going through, it could be on three ways. First of all, as a Christian, our sin can bring calamity into our life. If we don't live according to the command of God, the book of Psalm 1, last verse, verse 6 says, God knows the way of the righteous, but the way of of the wicked shall perish. That's what the Bible says in the book of Psalm 1, verse 6. So, sin may bring calamity into our lives. Sometimes the accuser could bring calamity into our life. The passage that we read today 
Satan continually challenged God concerning Job. In the book of Job chapter 1, from verse 9, God was dialoguing with Satan. See, have you seen my servant Job, who as righteous man, and Satan complained that I could not touch him, because you have surrounded with hedge of fire. So, the one thing we need to understand by that is that when we serve God in truth and spirit, there's edge of fire around us that Satan could not touch. He has to take permission from God before he can touch us. Same thing in the book of Job chapter 2, where God was at conferences with all the angels. Satan showed up, and again, God asked Satan, have you seen my servant Job? He said, yes, I've seen him. But because you so bless him, that's why he's faithful to you. That's why he's doing what you want him to do. If you withdraw your hand and I touch him, you will see that he will not be faithful to you. And God gave Satan permission to touch Job. God did not allow Satan to take his life. And Job lost everything that he owned except his wife and himself. Lost all his children, lost all his property, but he did not deny God, and his friend turned against him. So let us bring that to our level. Let us bring that to our present situation. Many of us, we are going through certain issues. Many of us are going through the storm of life. Many of us are going through tribulation. And those who think that we stand by us are not there. Maybe our spouse are not there. Maybe our childhood friends are not there. Maybe our friends are not there. Maybe even our relatives are not there. Maybe our siblings turn their back against us. But we must be focused. In the book of Job chapter 2, the last two verses, Job, while was telling Job, he said, cause this God and die because you are sovereign. But Job told his wife, you speak like a foolish woman. Is it not God that do good and do bad? And the book of Job chapter 24, verse 10, he said, say, well, you have tried me. I've passed through the tribulation. See, I will come out like gold. Job did not give up. He said, contain, have his faith. Is you hold on to his faith? I encourage you today. Don't let us lose our focus because of problem. Every problem that we face is temporary. Is that sickness is temporary? Is that lack of job is temporary? Is lack of finance is temporary? See, what is internal is to focus on God. The internal things to focus on God, the author and the finisher of our faith. So there is some distraction that come on our way. The friends of Job, they came to him. They distracted him. They were kissing him that he was a sinner. And he was showing them he was not a sinner. In that discussion, he was insisting that he never sinned. If you look at the book of Job from chapter 1 to chapter 41, it was a crisis. Job was trying to keep his faith, but it was difficult. Until the book of Job chapter 42 that we read from verse 1 to 12, Job always keep his faith. In the book of Job chapter 19 verse 25, Job was saying, I know my Redeemer liveth, and it shall stand last on the earth. So whatever you are going through, God does not abandon you. God is with you. The Holy Spirit is with you. Jesus Christ is with you. It may be lonely, but God is always there. God never fails. You see, God will reassure us these things temporary. But you need to wait upon the Lord. I will to wait upon the Lord. When, when you are going through this storm, wait upon the Lord. Because in the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, from verse 30 to 31, 
God has reassured us that even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young man shall utterly fall. Verse 31 says, But those who wait upon the Lord, those who wait upon the Lord, the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount like wings like eagle. They shall run and not weary. They shall walk and not faint. I want you to wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. The book of Psalm 40, from verse 1 to 3, I'm paraphrasing. See, I wait patiently for the Lord, and God moves us from a horrible and horrible pit, and it's established our step, and it put you upon the rock, and put a new song into our mouth. He said, well, I wait patiently for the Lord. When you wait patiently for the Lord, it means you are praying. It means you are fasting. It means you are meditating upon the word of God. So when we wait patiently for the Lord, it will move you out of that problem, out of that pit, and it will establish you upon the rock. And what is the rock? Jesus Christ is our rock. And it will put a new song into your mouth. It will put a new song into our mouth. That is what the Bible says. So don't let us look at our problem, but look at our God that is mightier than our problem. You see the book of Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. I'm paraphrasing. He said, when I wait upon the wash, that is, you are meditating. You are fasting. You are praying to the Lord. He said, God, I say, yeah, can you go spoke? He said, write your vision upon the tablet. We say, what God is telling us in that passage is to write our vision. You want to become a businessman, write it down. You want to be a doctor, write it down. You want to be an artist, write it down. You want to be a businessman, write it down. He said, write your vision upon the table that everybody around you can see it. He said, it may tarry, but wait for it. It surely come. It will not tarry again. That is the promise of God. That vision you have to be a successful businessman, it will come. That vision you have to be a successful student, that will come. That vision you have to be a successful artist, that will come. But wait for it. Look upon the cross. Don't look upon the man. Because it will come. It will come. Wait for it. Don't be dismayed. Don't be discouraged. Just wait for it. The time of restoration is coming your way. Because the Bible said in the book of Joel, chapter 2 from verse 24, 5 to 27, I'm paraphrasing. He said, I will restore to you, I mean, all the year that the enemy have taken away, the canker worm have eaten. He will restore to you. He will restore to us. So the power of restoration, God will put upon our life. God will put upon you the power to restore, the power of restoration, God will put upon us. And in the book of First Peter chapter 5, from verse 8 to 11, not paraphrasing, he said, be vigilant because the devil is walking around looking for people to destroy. He wants to destroy people. He said, but resist him. If I resist him, that you pray and fast him. Be righteous with God. Live holy life. So that, that we have suffered for a while. That will be a time of strength, a time of settlement, and a time of restoration. I pray for you today that the time of restoration has come to your life. The time of restoration has come into our family. The time of restoration has visited us. You have been visited by the time of restoration. God will restore you. He will restore everything any may have taken away from your life. He will restore because the passage that we read today, Job 42, chapter 12, he said, The later days of Job were far, far better than his beginning. Your tomorrow will be better than today. Your next year will be better than this year. God will visit you. 
God will restore you. Everything enemy have taken away from your life is restored back to you. Your years to come will be better than the present. Your present will be better than your past. It is well with you, it's well with your family, it's well with your soul. By power in the blood of Jesus, I restore you back to your full strength. I restore your head back. I restore your finance back. I restore your wisdom and knowledge back. I restore your sanity back. It is well with you, well with your household, well with your soul, well with your body, and well with your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Bible said in the book of Matthew chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world as gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Brethren, if you have not given your life to God, this is an invitation for you to surrender your life to God. Confess your sin. Ask for forgiveness. And let Jesus Christ be your Lord and Savior. And you'll be saved. After you have confessed your sin, ask for forgiveness and take Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Speak to your pastor. Do your baptism, immersion baptism, and pray for the power of Holy Spirit to fall upon you and you will be a born again Christian and you will be saved in Jesus name Amen Thank you for listening to today's message If you'd like to learn more about this ministry please visit grministry.org or call us on plus one six one seven four four nine zero six four six. To support this ministry, you can subscribe and follow our channel or give at grministry.org support. Stay blessed.